southwest Germany, there's a magical and precious Alpine kingdom that's full of rare surprises. Some of its castles are made of crystal. Others were built from the dreams of kings. Here, alpine flowers crown worthy queens. And ancient trees are symbols of survival and endurance. In spring, the gates to Bavaria's mountain kingdom are thrown wide open. For how long has this yew tree endured the icy blast of winter? According to legend, it could be 2,000 winters, perhaps many more. But we will never know. Its heart is hollow. No rings of time can tell when it first took root, no matter. What's another winter after so many? Castles of man are built to last. But castles of ice are created by winter and disappear in spring. In numerous canyons or clams, ice creates the bizarre and the beautiful. Mountain springs endlessly deliver construction materials for these fine sculptures. The Alpine Kingdom receives the highest rain and snowfall in Germany, which is great for building ice castles. But how does nature cope? Snow makes life tough for wild boars. When it's as deep as their bellies, they have a hard time finding food. It's a struggle to survive day to day. Yet other animals are preparing for the season ahead. Late winter is mating time for wild cats. The female will give birth in spring when hunting is easier. It's too early for coots to breed. But courting begins now. Spring will come when the sun finally melts the deep snow. And right now, it's easier to be a tree dweller. Even down on the lower slopes, snow can trap people in their houses, and avalanches are a threat. Farmhouses are also important for animals in winter. Ducks drop in for handouts, but cows need food and shelter 24-7. Above them lives a barn owl, a farmer's friend. For its size, a barn owl eats more rodents than any other creature. And where there's hay, is prey. Winters last for over half a year, so the farmer must store over three tons of hay to feed each of his cows. All that hay is a magnet for rodents. This is no rodent. It's another mouse hunter, a weasel.
It's called the least weasel, and it's small enough to chase mice down into their burrows and runs. When hunting, it constantly uses its nose to map the way home. And only when it's certain will it pick up its prey and return to the den. The farm is on the shoulder of slopes that rise up to the Bavarian Alps, some of the highest points of the mountain kingdom. For seven months, the land has been blanketed under snow. It's now April, and change is finally coming. It's hard to imagine anything but snow and ice up here but the sun has powerful magic. Crocuses usher in spring. They detect the temperature change as the snow melts. Crocus flowers spring up to be pollinated by the first insects of the season. A black woodpecker is nest building early. Once pollinated, crocus flowers soon wither, but wood ant mounds will continue to grow through summer. The black woodpecker is the only large tree hole maker in Europe. It can really make the chips fly. Chips will soon become part of the growing mound. Woodpeckers break into ant mounds and feed on larvae, but not now. It's time to seek a mate. Male chamois move up to the mountain tops as soon as the snow melts. They stake out territories, but the best alpine meadow is in hot demand. When the chasing's over and alpine plants begin to bloom, that's when the females will arrive. But the only thing approaching now is the first of the summer storms. The marmot has awoken from a long hibernation and is hungry. The adder also hibernated and is also hungry. Its warning could be adder or weather. The first sunbathe of spring is over. Up here, storms are frequent, sudden, and powerful. It's dangerous to be caught in the open during a mountain storm. So why does this strange creature emerge as the rain starts falling? The alpine salamander must keep its skin moist in order to breathe. So this is a great day for this creature of the high Alps. But storms and rain can wipe out life in an instant.
It's a miracle he survives. Many salamanders swept away in flash floods don't survive. He makes it to dry land when the river widens and loses its power. The little traveler was swept down over 1,000 meters. It's now in a very different world, a world where it will be killed if it remains here. The valley is home to many alpine species brought down in earlier floods. Most, like the adder, remain here. It's not the adder that will kill the salamander, though it would if it gets too close. It's the salamander's need of water to keep its skin moist that will kill it. In the valley, it's much warmer and drier. Spring snowflakes are also called St. Agnes flowers after the patron saint of virgins. They're perfumed like violets. The hedgehog is unimpressed by the scent of flowers. It smells and hears food. Grass frogs are mating, but the waters are still very cold, so their movements are slow. It makes them easy prey. Spring advances quickly. Warm days brings color to the valley. But it's not yet time for the cows to be let outside. The cows give milk for over 300 days a year. These farmers have a herd of just eight which is quite normal in this region. Though the cows are good milkers, it's not enough to provide a living. Many farmers up here have other jobs between the two daily milkings. The cows have numbers and names. 92714 is known as Sarah. Their milk is high in fat and protein, very acceptable for the old tomcat. He may not be able to catch mice anymore, but the kittens he fathered will be hunting by midsummer. The smell of spring growth is tantalizing. In fields around the house and barns, the grass will be cut for next winter's hay, and the cows will be taken to graze alpine meadows and are keen to get moving. Amazingly, the salamander is still alive. Driven by an urge to survive, it is moving steadily back towards the mountains. The cows too wish to be in the mountains, to escape the barn and the hay, and to graze fresh mountain pasture. But not yet. 
They're first gently reintroduced to grass after a winter of eating only hay. The salamander shelters by day while cows graze in a field near their barn. In the cool afternoon, the salamander resumes its marathon journey. It travels in the cool of day, but mainly at night. Each day, it travels only a few hundred meters. What drives a tiny creature to travel so far? Instinct is leading it back home, back to the mountains. Chuffs are alpine ravens that ride the skies over Central Europe's vast mountainous region. But southern Germany's Alps are special. They're called the Algoi, or mountains of moisture. Rain, snow, and ruggedness protect the inhabitants of this unique mountain kingdom. The southern border is the Algoian Alps, which divide Bavaria from Austria. In the north, it ends close to the ancient city of Memmingen. The border to the west is marked by the blue waters of Lake Constance. The 250 meter deep lake was scoured by vast glaciers that pushed out from the Alps during the last ice age. In the east, the border is the river Lech. It is here that the foundations of the kingdom can be revealed. The river passes through limestone beds from where many marine fossils are dislodged. This crab swam in a semi-tropical sea perhaps 60 million years ago. Now, a stone crayfish fossicks for food among its marine ancestors. The little crayfish is very sensitive to pollution. It can only survive away from farms, towns and industries in the higher reaches of the River Lech. It lives among fossils of great scientific interest. These ancient creatures were identified as being very similar to those found in limestone used in building the Egyptian pyramids. Fish larvae look out from translucent egg cases as if in tiny aquaria. Some eggs were accidentally attached to the mobile home of a caddisfly larva. They will hatch in four to five days if they can hang on that long. Female minnows attach their eggs to the gravel where they're fertilized by the red-bellied males. Minnows will spawn almost as far upstream as it's possible to travel. They're driven to fight their way far upstream like miniature salmon. They push on through fast flows where white-throated dippers stand sentry and on up into one of many countless streams that tumble down from the Alps. Beside these streams and in open woods grow rare plants like western marsh orchids. Swampy ground favors bird's eye primroses and Bavarian gentians. But the richest, most colorful fields are mountain pastures. They are being lost in parts of Europe, 
But these meadows, with up to 30 species of herbs, are preserved by one animal. And its season in the Alps has finally arrived. Early June, 4 a.m. All the activity in the barn is a chance for the edible dormouse to indulge a passion for cherries. The day dawns clear up top, but down below, it's a different matter. But rain will not stop the herd's journey to the mountains. Several small herds from the valley come together for the day's trek and a climb of 500 meters. It's wet enough for the salamander to travel by day, but it's still a very long way from home. Some cow herders are also far from home. Taking cows to the mountains is a cultural holiday for many people. They come from all walks of life for this unique experience. The cows have made this trip before, but it's the first time for the young bull. It only takes one individual to stop the whole cattle drive. Though his breed has lived here in the mountains for over 2,000 years, he seems not to carry the pride of his ancestors in his blood. The slow ascent allows the cows to graze along the way. Then finally, they reach the barns where they will find shelter in bad weather. Sarah and her herdmates will graze these fields for three months. They will be exposed to the weather and the wild, just like their ancestors. They eat young trees along with grass and herbs, ensuring that meadows are not overgrown by forest, but are preserved. Preserving pasture is not only good for nature's health, and the health of cows, it's also good for Bavarians. 
From these meadows comes milk with special flavours and qualities which is brought into the dairy, where it is made into El Goya mountain cheese. <laughs> The milk is first heated and stirred to slowly transform the protein and fat into a solid curd. Getting it to just the right consistency is a critical part of the process and it relies on instinct. Next, the curd is separated from the remaining liquid, or whey. It's the solid curd that will go on to become the finest of cheese. El Goy mountain cheese is hard, and that hardness is achieved by pressure which further improves its structure and flavour. Two metres of rain falls in the high Alps each year, almost as much as a tropical rainforest. It creates many things, from cheese to trees to a mountain climbing salamander. Its progress can now be measured by landmarks. It has climbed 500 metres, as judged by Hohejfangao Castle. This is where the fairy tale King Ludwig II of Bavaria spent his childhood, and where he dreamt of an even greater castle that he would one day build a short distance up the valley. The castle of his dreams is called Neuschwanstein. The salamander's instinct leads him towards a rocky castle that is cool, moist and safe. He has been travelling for weeks. It's remarkable that he's not been attacked by a predator. The northern eagle owl, one of the largest owls in the world, is common around here. This one's chicks are content for the moment and not hungry. Most female chamois are pregnant, and they seek out the juiciest herbs on the steepest ledges. Such agility would be useful to a salamander. The pleading voice is that of a black woodpecker chick. In fact, there are three of them, all big and hungry and will soon leave the nest. The chicks of alpine ravens are also close to flying. In summer, chuffs gather in family groups on mountaintops and are ever ready to ride the wind. Males and females that are bred together fly together. In the poetry of flight, they confirm the bond that ties them together through summer. These birds stand sentry over the highest towers of the Alpine Kingdom. 
Here, the air is thin and the sun's harmful radiation is intense. But it's not all bad living on the roof of Europe. This plateau is named Gotsaka, God's Field. The limestone of this remarkable formation took many millions of years to create. It's made of the shells of marine creatures that died and fell to the bottom of a shallow ocean. As Africa collided with Europe, this old seabed was thrust up to the very tops of the Alps. Many plants are limestone lovers, and marmots live well on them, though they don't go to the extremes of the sure-footed chamois to find them. Alpine dairy farmers dislike marmots. They eat too much pasture, and if a cow steps into one of their many burrows, it can easily break a leg. Hikers are drawn to the rugged beauty of the limestone Alps. During summer, chamois and marmots share with strangers the spectacular panoramas from the highest meadows. Of all the views to be had in the Algoi, one of the finest is from Nibelhorn. From its summit at 2,200 meters, one can see 400 peaks, a sea of mountains that were once under the sea. Immense forces continue to push Africa and Europe together. The Alps are still rising at the rate of the thickness of your fingernail each year. By late summer, the cows are producing maximum milk from pasture high enough to tickle their bellies. Good food, pure water, great views. But sometimes you have to share it. Of all the alpine plants, the Eidelweiss is most revered. It's a symbol of the mountains, once used as a medicine and to cast the spell of love. King Ludwig II loved this land so much that it was here that he had built his fairy tale castle. It's now become one of the most famous buildings in the world. And each year, over one million visitors from all over the world come here. King Ludwig dedicated the castle to the composer Wagner. And upon his death, it was named Neuschwanstein, 
after Wagner's opera, The Castle of the Swan Knight. But the castle was also named in honor of the birds he loved so much. The king only ever spent a few weeks in the castle of his dreams. In the river below lives a little queen who builds and lives in a most remarkable castle. The riverbed is strewn with bright crystals. The caddisfly lava uses the finest of mountain crystal, rose quartz and parite to build her castle. Her desire for beauty and elegance mirrors that of her royal neighbor. The end of summer is approaching. But before winter closes the door on the kingdom, there's much to be done. The salamander has made it back home. It has survived being washed down the mountain, then a mammoth climb back up, a remarkable journey of a hundred days. It's time for the herd to leave the mountain. This is the last time they will be milked up here for several months. The last of the milk for Algoy mountain cheese. In the old days, making cheese was the only way to preserve milk up here. Now, some of the best cheeses come from the mountains of southwest Germany. The salamander was also shaped by these mountains. By the altitude and moist air he struggled hard to return to, and by the rocks that are now his castle. The alpine pastures will soon be deep under snow and the cows back safely in their barn, though a few would prefer to stay behind. It's been a good summer, no losses or serious injury. And for the champion cow, a prize a coronet of wildflowers for she who produced the most summer milk. Sarah's summer prize is a horn that broke off when she was caught under falling rocks. The queen of the high meadows produced over 2,000 liters of milk during summer that's enough for 50 rounds of mountain cheese. It's only fitting that she leads the parade back home. Their bells announce the end of summer. At the village, herds from neighboring pastures meet at the Scheidplatz, the separating place. 
It's also summer's end for the cow herders. They now leave and go back home, or to school, or to work. Here, owners of the cows collect their animals to take them home. They will not wear the bells again for another nine months. Autumn mists come early. They hang in the cooling air as a prelude to the snow that will close the door to the kingdom. Red deer stags bugle their strength and virility to hinds. But the bugling, which will be heard well into winter, also tells other males not to come near. If they do, they risk a fight. and quite possibly death from impalement on these mighty antlers. Survival in these mountains in winter requires toughness. But in winter's past, survival was impossible. Thousands of years ago, the Alps were locked in an ice age that lasted a hundred thousand years. Glaciers filled every valley, wiping out all life. Animals and humans could only live here after the ice retreated and the forests spread back and reclaimed the land. The closest connection to those ancient times is the yew tree of Bolishvang. Yews dominated much of Europe after the ice retreated. Though maybe 2,000 years old, it's a grandchild of those ice age trees, but a strong reminder of a frozen past and a chilly future. The yew tree is poisonous. Roots, bark, leaves all contain toxins that make animals sick. So why do they come here? They come because one part of the tree is not poisoned. In autumn, it produces a harvest of red berries. The berries are sweet, tasting of strawberries and quince and eating plenty will help get through winter. Finding enough food now could later spell the difference between life or death. An earth star fungus releases spores if touched. Spores come from mushrooms, and this is the season of mushrooms. The poisonous fly agaric's bright color matches the dress of a red slug, one that's become extinct everywhere but here. Mushrooms are on the diet of many animals. The fungi that produce them grow underground around tree roots exchanging minerals and other food in a partnership that makes forests mighty.
winter. Snow erases all trace of color and sound. But the boreal owl hears beyond the silence. It listens for mice beneath the snow. Snow buries summer hillsides. And in deep canyons, crystal palaces are erected in this kingdom of bitter cold. The gates of the Alpine Kingdom are closed to all but a few. One way to beat the cold is to relive pleasures of the past. To travel through the kingdom as King Ludwig did all those years ago. When the snow came, chuffs moved down into the valleys to find food. But on clear days, some returned to the tops to ride the wind again. It's an admirable human quality to give to those who have little. And it's the little ones that suffer most in winter. A well-stocked bird table can save many lives. In winter, cows want for nothing, except perhaps the taste of sweet mountain herbs. But summer grasses were mown and dried for hay, and that's all that's on the menu for another five months. Hay also means prey. And a mouse a day will slip down very nicely during winter. A belly full of hay and a scratch isn't a bad life either. It's certainly better than being outside. In the Alpine Kingdom, time is frozen, but seasons move ever so slowly on towards spring. <laughs> 